Hey guys, welcome back to another tutorial. Today I'm going to be finally covering how to do these jelly sphere simulations. Um, you guys probably saw on my Instagram I posted this as a reel. It's a super fun thing to create and it's actually really easy to make. Um, so let's go ahead and hop right into the tutorial. Let me go ahead and minimize my face here so you guys don't have to look at that. Move my logo up and let's go ahead and open up a new document in Blender. So I just recreated this real quick just to cover all the settings. Um, so this is basically what we're going to be creating right here. Um, it's running a little bit slow because you actually do want to go ahead and bake your simulation. But as you can see, we have these awesome physics going on. So let's go ahead and do file new. I'll save this one. That's fine. Um, first of all, delete the light, delete the cube, and let's go ahead and add in a plane because we need something for our jelly sphere to collide with here. So add in a plane and then add in either a, a sphere or a round cube. I'm going to do a round cube because it's more perfect geometry. Uh, and there is an add-on for that. Go ahead and drop a comment down below. I'll let you know how to add that on there. And then I'm going to do S2 to scale it up by 2. And I'm going to bring it up above our floor just a little bit so it has a little bit of room to fall there. I'm also going to save this super quickly to my Instagram folder as tutorial jelly sphere live stream. I know, very long name there, but that's okay. All right, so let's go ahead and click on our uh, floor right here and then go over to our right panel, add a rigid body and type passive. And that's all you need to do for that. And then just add a collision and you should be good to go. Um, and then click on our sphere here and add a soft body physics uh, property. And then under our object, uh, let me go ahead and pull up my settings here that I wanted to copy over. I actually wrote down the exact settings for everything. Um, for our friction, you can just keep that at one. And then for the mass, I'm going to go ahead and give that five kilograms. Turn off goal. There's a little checkbox here for goal. You want to go ahead and turn that off. And then under edges, we want to do point. 0.4 for push and for pull, so 0.4 for those. Uh, for damp, we're going to go ahead and put one for that. And again, this took a lot of testing. And then for bending, we're going to go ahead and put three. Turn on self collision, which is right here. Turn on stiffness. Under stiffness, we are going to give that a value of like really low, like 0.05. And everything else should be good to go. Um, the only other last thing that we're going to do is right click and shade this smooth and then we're also going to save this and add a subdivision surface modifier to our sphere for now you can just turn it off for the viewport so things render more quickly let's go ahead and play this back and see what we get now it's going to take a second um, just make sure i have all my settings turned on properly it looks like everything is working great and it's going about two frames a second and that's because it's calculating all the physics right now but more or less that is the whole tutorial that is how you create a jelly sphere simulation um, but I'll hop into some basic lighting and stuff like that and show you guys like how to set up a render um, to actually go ahead and render this. Now, one thing you do want to go ahead and do is actually click on your physics properties for your sphere here. Go to cache and you can actually bake this. I'm just going to set the last frame to 100. I'm going to click on bake. Give that a second to go through. As you can see, it's going a little bit slow because there is a lot for Blender to calculate here, especially considering that the sphere is a more complicated object with a lot of vertices. So it is actually going through and it's calculating that right now. It'll just take a quick second. So let me check my comments on my live stream here. Uh, man, man, why always your live stream starts when I'm busy? I'm sorry, man. Um, <laughs> you know, let me know what, what a good time for you guys would be. I apologize for the, um, for the inconvenience there. So try my best to make it work for when, you know, when I'm around doing my thing. So, all right, so it looks like it's about done there. So let's go ahead and play that back. And it looks really good. And now if we go back to our modifiers and turn our subdivision surface back on, see how much smoother that looks now? And you guys can bump that up to whatever value you like. And it's looking really, really good. So I'm gonna go ahead to our output properties. I'm gonna make our last frame 100. I am going to go ahead and switch over to cycles, GPU. I'm gonna save again. Max samples, let's do 150. Let's snap to our camera and click on it. Let's pop open this little tab here so we can adjust these settings. Location, we'll do seven um, for both. Well, negative seven for the Y value there. I'm just gonna bring this up to uh, about 5.6 and then a 45 degree angle for our camera. I'm gonna extend our plane a little bit, just like that. 
Go back to our camera, perspective is fine. Let's switch over to render view. Now you're not gonna really see much here because there's no lighting or materials. So go over to your world properties and add in an environment texture. Um, and I'm just gonna go to my HDRIs. I'm gonna select something like, I've been using this one a lot. Where is it? There it is. This one's pretty cool. I like this one because I feel like it has really nice diffused lighting. I'm gonna click on my floor. I'm just gonna add in a black shader so that we can easily see our material here. And then for our jelly material, I'm thinking we'll do something like a glass shader. And we're gonna go ahead and give that a nice blue or green jelly material. I guess typically jelly would be more of like a purple or pink, right? We can, you can make this whatever you want. How about we go with something like purple? I think that looks really nice. And then of course you can turn your roughness down as much as you like. I'll turn it all the way down and I'll give this 1.3 for the IOR. That looks pretty good. You guys can mess around with these settings and make them literally whatever you want. That looks pretty cool too. It's a little bit harsh, so I might even turn up the subdivisions one more time. And as you can see, everything gets smoothed out when you add that second subdivision in. So this is looking really, really nice. Um, I actually really like this, but I think I want to adjust my camera angle. So guys, just a little pro tip here. Remember, when you, if you want to adjust your camera angle really easily around the object you're focused on, just add in an empty, plain axis. I'm going to go to frame one here, and I'm going to parent the camera to the empty. So I'm going to click on my camera, and then I'm going to shift click my empty, control P to parent, click object. And now if we snap back to our camera, and we click on our empty, we can actually adjust the rotation here. So let's go to whatever frame we want, that looks good. And I can just adjust my rotation around my object to my liking. Actually kinda like this angle right here, I think that looks pretty good. And then again, you can click on your camera, you can adjust the height and the, the actual rotation here. That looks really nice. And again, you guys can go back to frame one or really any frame and just adjust the location of your camera just to get something that you're looking for. I kind of want this to be off to the side for the thumbnail. So I'm gonna kind of keep it somewhere like that. And I'm gonna teach you guys one more quick trick on how to get some really nice diffused lighting. Just go ahead and add in a UV sphere here. And we're gonna wanna scale this up beyond our entire scene, beyond our camera and our plane. I'm gonna scale up our plane a little bit more scale up our sphere, and then we just wanna give our sphere a nice little glass shader here. Right click, shade smooth. Now pop back onto our camera here, and as you can see, we have this really nice diffused lighting effect. And then if you take our sphere and you adjust the roughness, we can actually determine basically more or less the background blur. Now you don't have to do it this way, this is just the way I prefer. Now one last thing I'm gonna do is you see how we can see this sharp edge of the plane here. I'm actually gonna click on the plane and I'm just gonna adjust the rotation so that it's more evened out there. Everything's looking pretty solid. I'll adjust the roughness a little bit more from our sphere. And then now we have this really super diffused look for our render. It's looking really nice. Um, so let's go ahead and play this back and just see what we have. Go ahead and click on the camera real quick and adjust the pass part out so we can really narrow in on our scene here and see what this is gonna look like. All right, let's go ahead and play this back. And it's looking really, really good. And when you go to render this, it's gonna look so smooth. I'll probably do 24 frames a second, but I'm still gonna export this as a PNG sequence. That way, when we go ahead and compile all our frames, we can choose whatever frame rate we like. Even if you wanna play this back in 60 frames a second, that's totally fine. But guys, this is looking really, really good. I'm gonna go ahead and click on my sphere again, check my IOR, maybe maybe test some different IORs. This is, this is 1.2 right here. And that also looks pretty good. And what's great is since we already baked our simulation, we can actually change the IOR in real time and test different materials on this. Now you don't have to make this a jelly material. I just personally think this looks awesome. So I'll probably use like a frame like that for the actual tutorial. And then I'll take my camera, move it with G so that everything is slightly off like that. So now we can put our text on the left for the thumbnail and everything is set up properly. All right, let's go ahead and give you guys some render settings because I know you guys like when I go into super detail with this stuff. Um, I'll keep uh, 150 as our max samples, that should be fine. Let me go and select a temporary folder to export this in. I'm just gonna call this Jelly Export. And then I'm gonna go into that folder. I'm just gonna give our project files a name, Jelly Export, and then YT for YouTube. 
press accept. And as you can see, I'm on PNG here, so I'm gonna keep it as a PNG sequence. Frame rate really doesn't matter when you're exporting a PNG sequence. And everything else looks good. Denoising, I'm gonna switch that over to optics. And then if you guys really wanna get into the light paths, sometimes this is what really affects your render settings. Right now we're at 1920 by 1080, which is standard HD format. But if you guys really wanna get into the light paths and you really wanna cut down on your render time, you can just make all these values three. Now we're not using volume, so you can actually set that to zero. So, well, I'm sorry, I set the wrong value. That was transmission. You wanna set volume to zero and that shouldn't affect anything. But if you did notice, there's actually something great to point out here. If you were to turn your transmission value down, you would actually lose significant quality in your render. So be careful what you do with these light path settings. And of course, you can turn these values up if you really want that transmission to pop you can turn that up to something like 10, right? But again, all of these have to add up to the total up here, so let's add them up. We have six, 16, 19. So 19 for your total. This is looking pretty good, and again, you can adjust these to your liking. The lower they are, the uh, slower or faster your render time will be. So keep that in mind when you guys are actually going to render. Let's go ahead and test out one frame here and see how long it takes. I'm hoping it'll be less than like 10 or 15 seconds per frame and it looks like I'll probably be pretty close to that, maybe maybe about 10. Yeah, okay, so we're looking at about 10 seconds per frame on my personal computer here that I built, and it looks pretty good. If you zoom in, you can notice a little bit of noise in there, but the denoiser actually did a really good job at um, fixing that, so I'm actually pretty happy with this, and I might keep these settings as is, or maybe bump them up to like 300 passes per frame. So if we're looking at about 10 seconds of frame here, when I go to render, that'll be 10 times 100. So it'll be, um, what is that, 1,000? No, did I do that math right? Yeah, I think I did. So it'll be about 1,000 seconds, divide that by 60. I can't do that math, but um, it shouldn't take that long at all. So I'm pretty excited about how this is gonna turn out. I'm gonna render it and put it at the beginning of this video. But guys, that's pretty much the tutorial. You now know how to create a jelly sphere simulation in Blender. Um, super simple. And remember, go ahead and bake your simulation so that everything runs quicker and you guys can apply any materials you want, any lighting, um, and feel free to copy all of my physics settings here. It's, uh, it's gonna be super fun for you guys to see what you're gonna come up with. Go ahead and drop a comment down below. Let me know what you thought of this tutorial. If you found this valuable, please consider subscribing, liking, maybe sharing with a friend who also likes physics simulations. I will see you guys in the next tutorial.